Welcome into another episode of Spiritual Philosophy Chatter with the Joneses. I am Danny Jones. And I am Samantha Jones. And this is episode number 244. 244. What is our topic today? This is self-awareness. Here we go. Yeah, this is, um, I can't believe that it's taken us this long to get to a topic like this because actually now looking back, I see this is a part, a really important part of spiritual awakening. So I'm excited to talk about it. Cool. Yeah. Me too. But before we do anything that you want to talk about from last week. Yes, absolutely. So last week we did the mind-body-soul connection. Uh-huh. And I wanted to tell a little story for a minute about one of our listeners. And I'm not going to use her name because I didn't ask to use the story. But she's very sweet. I do readings for her occasionally. And, and she had listened to this episode. And she's having a lot of problems, a lot of physical and and um, mental problems and stuff. And she's, she's very overweight and she would like to lose some weight, you know, and be more healthy, but everything is making her not do that. Like what I mean by that is like her mental state is not allowing her to do the things that she needs to do to help her to lose weight and to feel better. And because she's in that physical state, her body doesn't feel good and her mind doesn't feel good. So it's like this, like, it's like a circle, you know? It is all connected. Yep. So we went through kind of what she thought like her worst habits were. And and I really realized that this is, it's really universal when it comes to dealing with all of this stuff is that there is no way to take all of your problems and try and fix them all at once. Nope. And so like the baby steps, again, I had talked to her about that. Pick one thing, just pick one thing. That is bad about your diet or your exercise or whatever. She has this really sweet dog that doesn't go out as much as the dog should because there's a neighbor. This is this is a whole other part of this. But there's a neighbor that bothers her every time that she goes out and is like a, she's got like a mental handicap. Right. Uh-huh. So whenever she leaves the house to take the dog out, this lady comes out and bothers her. Uh-huh. So she doesn't want to go out and she's very self-conscious about the way she looks. And so she doesn't want like she doesn't want people to make fun of her or whatever. She's, you know, self-conscious about it. Yeah. But I was thinking about with the the lady. Right. Because everything is a test. So why is this lady in her path? Why is it that when she leaves the house, this lady comes out and wants to talk to her and follow her and stuff like that? And, you know... Does the lady have mental illness, you said? She does, yeah. But there's always a reason behind it. And I don't know what the reason is. Is the lady rude? Threatening? No. Just wants to be friendly. Yeah. Just maybe a little bit overly friendly. And and the listener, she would rather just not. Uh. You know, so it's like... We were actually have been in that situation ourselves yeah. when we were walking our dogs and there was a guy that huh? used to stop us and he, elderly had, man, yeah. mm-hmm, he had Alzheimer's and he would stop and tell us the same story every time. Yeah. And we wondered the same thing. Why? What is this about? And, you know, what we came up with is that it has to do with patience yeah. and being kind to people. I think so. Yeah, because we used to go by there and then he wasn't around anymore. Yeah. It's like once we figured it out. Yeah. It was so weird. Yeah. So for the listener that I'm talking about, because this is something that didn't really click to me at the time is maybe look for the lesson in that as well. Look for the lesson always in everything, because there is one. And once we figure it out and we fix it, then it's not there anymore. Kind of like what Danny's saying about how the guy wasn't there anymore. Right. Even like uh, to what's her name again? Who? This person. Oh, I'm not giving it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cause I didn't ask her. So never mind. I understand. Yeah. Um, anyways, but my suggestion would be is, so the one thing that you don't want to do, just do it, try it, and see if you get a different result. If anything yes. in your life is different as a result of you facing that and just doing it. That's right. Now, I know that seems like, well, that's exactly what I'm saying I don't want to do. <laughs> Duh. I understand that. But you're trying all these other ways and it, nothing's feeling or changing. Yeah. Or budging either way, right? right? So maybe just take that as like a 
what if this was what I was supposed to do? Yes. And kind of treat, you know, since you're um, feel, you know, maybe like it's hard for you with socially to go yeah. out because you're insecure, or, yes. you know, you're not feeling good about yourself. Maybe by giving this person that comes out a moment of your time occasionally, something in your life will change as a result of you doing that. Yes, absolutely. So I don't really know. I'm not saying your whole your whole life is going to change no. because you do this. Mm. But you're taking a different approach than you normally would. Yes. And I also agree with you about that the worst thing you can do is try to change all your problems at once. Yeah, it's not going to work. No. no, you're just going to crash and burn. Yeah. Pick so, one thing, start there, and then go from there. Yeah. It's, I told her soda was one of the things that she said is hard. And soda was very well, hard for me, but I did it, and I feel so much better. So if you're a soda addict like I was, I, I highly suggest just walk away from it. You know, now I can have a soda and it's not an addiction where before it was very much an addiction. Yeah. So, you know, I yeah. totally understand. Nicotine ruled my life for a long time. <laughs> yeah. We all have our vices, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. It still does in some way, you know? Yeah. Sure. It's like as, as foul as it is to me when I smell smoke off a traditional cigarette, um, there, your body and your mind yeah. is still in there, like going. I really want one of those. Yeah, it's very Not strange because of the smoke, but because of the way it makes you feel. Yeah, strange, huh? Mm-hmm. Yep. So, anyways, I just wanted to tell that story because well, cool. I think sometimes our listener stories help our listeners mm-hmm. even help more us. than ours do. Yeah, yeah, they help us as well. Absolutely. So that's cool. So yeah, so that's all I have from last week. All right. Well, before we jump into it, do you want to share your information? Yes. So you can find me at samanthajonespsychicmedium.com. Everything you need is there. I have a TV show that airs every Monday. You can find that there as well as my blog and where to find us. Or you can email us at spiritualjoneses at gmail.com. Very good. And for you, sir. Thank you. Uh, my art, djonesartcollection.com for the web at djonesartcollection for Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. And for my photography Etsy page, uh, D Jones Photography seventy one, and my Instagram photography page is D Jones seventy one photography, and that's all I got for that. Okay. All right. Then episode two hundred and forty four, self awareness. Self awareness. Doesn't it seem like a simple, simple like, topic? Right. Right. I'm <laughs> like, like, sort hello? of like, I'm, can we get a definition? Because <laughs> yes. I start to go, ooh, I'm here. Wait a minute. That's not exactly what they're right. talking about. Yes, let me read the definition. Self-awareness is knowing who you are, your thoughts, feelings, beliefs, strengths, weaknesses, and how you fit into the world around you. It's like having a mirror inside your mind that helps you understand yourself better. When you're self-aware, you can recognize your emotions, understand why you feel certain ways, and make choices that are true to yourself. I can tell you that before my spiritual awakening, this was not at all what was happening with me. I was not self-aware. I did not know that I was not self-aware. Am I now self-aware? Yes, I feel like I, I am much more, but nothing is ever perfected. There's still many more areas that I need to grow at this at. But it was something that I had been thinking about lately that I felt like I am really in touch with who I've become and the feelings that I have and why they're there and what I need to do for them. And then I actually decided to start seeing a a new therapist. And I'm doing this because I have some trauma from my childhood that I'm not able to do the shadow work on myself, that it's just not working and it needs to be fixed. So I'm seeing a therapist for that so she can help me through it. But one of the things that she said to me during our first session the other day was, you're one of the most self-aware people I've worked with. And I found that to be very um, flattering. You know, I mean, yeah. that to me is more flattering than if she would have said, you're very pretty. Uh, mm-hmm. Because I've really worked on that a lot. And so for somebody else to notice that was kind of cool. So then I started really thinking about it and thinking about how most people probably live in a world where 
they're going with whatever's going on around them and they're not really self-aware. They're not really aware of what their feelings are and how to deal with them. And, and being honest with yourself, I think, is one of the hardest things that humans have to do. Mm-hmm. And so that also fits into this self-awareness. Wow. So definitely something good I to talk about. I wonder if there's such thing as being hyper self-aware because sometimes I feel that way. Yeah. You know, like... Can I not think about my thoughts for a minute? Can I not wonder why the chain of effect and effect of, you know, cause and effect of yeah. things in life and the way the world rotates and all that, you know, is always like on my mind, you know? I don't know if that's what self-awareness necessarily is. Like all that stuff, of course, our minds are always going. Right. But um, but let's talk about that a little bit because yeah. I do have it kind of laid out here. So what are some examples of self-awareness? Oh. Recognizing your emotions. You notice when you're feeling happy, sad, angry, or frustrated, and you understand why you're feeling that way. And I'm going to add to this, too, that you can acknowledge that you feel that way. Uh If you're feeling angry and you're sitting there going, I'm not angry. Well, you know, you have to recognize that that's the moment that you're in. Uh And you might not always be angry, but you might be angry in that moment. Trying to cover things up doesn't help. Acknowledging strengths and weaknesses. You know what you're good at and where you might need to improve. For example, you might realize you're great at listening to others, but struggle with public speaking. Mm. This is definitely, look, I'm going to say this right now. If you're not willing to be honest with yourself, you're not going to be able to fix any of this. Because I have had to sit in my own head. And when I do something like any any of these things that isn't self-aware, I am literally stopped and made to process it to make myself understand what's going on. Whether it's an argument, whether it's um, having my feelings hurt, there's so many things that that go on, but it really is about saying to yourself, this is who I am, this is where I am right at this moment, and accepting all those negative things about yourself. Mm -hmm. Accepting negative about yourself is something most people don't like to do. Right. They, but it's one of the, the things that makes you the most self-aware when you're able to say, I'm not good at this. Mm-hmm. I saw this, uh, I don't know, it was TikTok or Facebook or something, and it was talking about the proper way of handling a situation when you've done wrong. Yeah. And it showed like a text message that was, you know, like rude about, well, this wasn't my fault or whatever. And then like the proper way of handling things of being like, I didn't like the way that I acted in that situation and I'm very sorry and I'm going to work on it. That self-awareness, being able to say, I messed up in this situation, but not making it about that there's a reason. Because Ah. the reason is that that's you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we all have our personality flaws or or Mm. things we need to work on or whatever. But if you can't recognize that there's a, a flaw there or if you want to, what I know most people do is put it on the other person. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't do anything wrong. Mm-hmm. You're the one that did something wrong. And if you can't say that you did something wrong, well, how can you fix it? How can you heal it? Wow. You know? True. Okay, a couple more on this list. Understanding personal values. You have a clear idea of what matters most in your life, whether it's honesty, kindness, creativity, or something else. Reflecting on past actions, you think about your choices and behaviors, considering how they align with your values and goals. We talk about this a lot, you and I, and we have on the show too. Reflecting on the things that we've done in the past, a lot of people don't want to do that. Right? You know, they don't want. It is. They don't want to face what they've done. But the thing is, is that in order to grow from it and move on, you have to. You have to acknowledge it. You have to say okay, that was something that I did that was wrong mm-hmm. and I wouldn't do it now. My my morals or values are different or whatever it is. Right. But acknowledging the fact that you were once that person that yeah. did that. Well, the beauty of that, I think, too, is that then you can also, if you've worked to change, you can reflect then on how you've grown. Yes, exactly. So you see improvement and then that gives you an opportunity to pat yourself on the back. Yep. Here's a That's tough also be seeing, being self-aware, I think. Yes. No, I agree. Um, here's a tough one. Accepting feedback. You're mm-hmm. open to hearing feedback from others, even if it's not always easy to hear, because you know it can help you grow. Sometimes when you and I have an issue and you tell me something that is very true about myself, 
it stings, but it's true, right? Mm -hmm. And so, like, I have to face it and go, you know what? He's right. He's right. You do do that. And that's something that I've had to do in a lot of instances in our relationship, especially because there's been things that have come back, that things that I did in my previous marriage, that then, like, they come up in ours, and I'm like, ah, you were the problem. Ugh. But you have to admit that you're the problem, right. you know? If you yeah, can't when we all results. we all have our moments. Yeah, and not I don't think that means that it, you know, well, at least for us that one person in particular is a problem. It's no. just like we each have our moments, and that's part of, well, a part of the commitment of of marriage. You know, is saying, well, I'm sticking this out. I'm going to work this out. Yeah, but that's also meaning then you're going to be self aware. You're mm -hmm. going to go, shit, uh, I did that again. Damn. It's hard. Didn't and a lot of people won't do that. Right. They just won't. And that's, I, I, we talked about this the other day is that if everybody was more self-aware and they recognized what they were doing, they wouldn't want to treat others that way. And it would make everybody happier. And, yeah. but everybody has to change, you know, yeah. it, it's like, we all have to work on this. I mean, we don't, <clears throat> you know, we can change, but right. in order for this, this thing as a society, yeah. It has to be, yeah, yeah a big thing. Uh, let's and see. I don't know if that will ever happen. Yeah. But maybe. God, it would be nice, though, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, a more self-aware uh, right. earth, yeah. Uh, let's see. Setting boundaries. You understand your limits and can communicate them effectively to others, such as saying no when you're overwhelmed. Definitely one I'm still working on. And I and I know a lot of others that have that problem as well as the saying no, because, you know, we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Um, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why mm -hmm. it's hard to say no. Right. But yeah, that is a tough one. Yeah. Setting the boundaries. Uh, you don't take... feel like you're letting somebody down. You know, that's. Yeah. You, you know, even if you like, on one hand, you might be helping this person, but on the other hand, it's putting you out yes. in a way that maybe isn't right for you at the time. Yeah, exactly. There's There's got to be, um, yeah, I don't know, common sense there, whatever. What's, right. Can't be, like, yeah, a lot of times it's hard to say no because right. you want the other person to be happy, but you can't be miserable because the other person. No. It's compromise. Yeah. And that goes in anything, any relationship, whether it's a spouse or work or kids or, or mm -hmm. anything, you know, these things all apply for sure. Yeah. Uh, taking responsibility. When things go wrong, you are able to take responsibility for your actions and, instead of blaming others. That's another one that tends to be very difficult. Well, yeah, I did that, but because yeah. you did this or because such and such did this or, or whatever, when it's like, nah. Because you're the only one that right. can react that way. You're reacting because right. of the way that you're looking at it. Mm -hmm. Like, I might not react the same way. You might not react the same way, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's it's on each person how you're going to handle each situation. Right. And I think in the, a lot in this process of being self-aware is being aware of when your ego is doing something like that. Yeah. When it's not allowing you to admit, I'm at fault here. Yeah. And I should just apologize. Because if I could do that, it probably would end this a lot quicker yeah. and then make it possible to move on. Right. It's the, the non-apologetic um, or compassionate approach will tend to make it long and drawn out. Yeah, absolutely. When I started this spiritual journey, I didn't really realize what was going on. Like, I knew that... I was working on a lot of things for my career because doing a show like this or doing any show or working with people, nobody likes a hypocrite, right? Mm -hmm. So if I'm not working on myself and I'm not doing the things that I'm talking about, then I'm a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. So I felt like that's why I'm working on all this. But I now realize that I've worked on all of this for my own happiness more than anything. Yeah. It doesn't matter what anybody else really thinks, ultimately. Right. I mean, I want to be that. Right. I know that, you were saying yeah. you don't want to be, um, <clears throat> you know, yeah, like you said, hypocrite yeah. or contradictory. You know? Absolutely. You know, I, I want to put out who I really am so that people will like me for who I really am. And those people that don't like me don't <clears throat> need to be around. You know, it's right. like that's really how you bring in the people that are meant for you anyway is by truly being yourself. Yeah. But that is really, really hard to do. But 
on the spiritual awakening, the self-awareness definitely is something that comes with it. And I don't know how much you'll agree with this, but like when you do things, I feel like after you've learned about how things work, if you do something that maybe is, is not right by, you know, moral standards or not even just that, like little things here and there that you're like, Ooh, that wasn't, you feel almost more guilty, almost yeah. worse about it. Right. Yeah. I think that's part of where we've shared like that. This um, has made us just want to try to be better people, mm -hmm. um, not because there's any race or to get to heaven or it's me, not them, or it's only a select number. We don't believe any of that stuff. It has nothing to do with that. It's just the fact that I understand that I come from love yeah. and I return to love. Yeah. So everything else in this world and this whole equation of my life and simulation does not go with me. No. Nothing goes with me except my mind, me, my consciousness, not my actual brain. Yeah. And my love, ability and uh, to receive and give. Yeah. Those are the only, that's what your true essence is. Yep. And we're all sitting here trying to remember that. Yep. And trying to wake up to trying remember to up. that, to remember that's where you come from and you will return to that. Yes. But for now, you're kind of living in a fog. Yes. You know, the big difference really, I think, between here and the other side is one big thing and that's ego. Mm -hmm. They don't have an ego there. And so that is really what sets the human world aside from the spiritual ah. world. So I didn't really even think so much about what is an ego, you know, once upon a time. You hear that term egotistical and stuff like that thrown around a lot. But the fact is, is we all have an ego. Oh, yeah. And there's, there's parts of our ego that is healthy. Huh? The parts that like... If there's, you know, somebody that we're keeping an eye out for, you know, like, like we feel like we're being followed or whatever. Well, you're protecting that, that self-protection. Yeah. And that is a part of the ego, but it's a good part of the ego. Yeah. It's the bad stuff. It's the stuff that tells you you're more important than other people. Right. Those types of things that are the ego that we just don't have there. Yeah. You know, and you don't have to watch your back there either. Really. <laughs> 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 But some of the things that uh, when you're going through the spiritual awakening and you're kind of opening up the self-awareness, there's some reasons why it's kind of crucial going through the spiritual awakening. And one is definitely recognizing the ego, recognizing that you have an ego. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's here's a good example, too, is like, I know you you did this. You might not anymore. But like at the beginning of this, I felt like the universe wanted to hear me say, I don't need nice things. I just need what I need to survive, which is true. That is true. That's need, right? That doesn't mean that's what I want. But I didn't feel like I was entitled to want, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. I felt like right. if I was asking for material things or money <clears throat> or showing any kind of greed or anything like that, I felt like that was wrong. And I realize now that it's just all about balance. Mm -hmm. It's like yeah. if you're... Um, really saying, you know, I, I really want this for my life and it's not, you know, uh, to hurt people or, you know, overthrow anything. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. there's just people that'll do really bad right. things with that kind of power right. or whatever. Uh, it's different. It's different. I agree. I think it's, um, uh, God, there was something I wanted to say on that. I totally escaped from my mind. You know when that happens. Um, Okay. Go ahead. It'll come okay. back to me. That's okay. If you remember, just let me I know. I will. Okay. Uh, also, going through a spiritual awakening and dealing with the self-awareness will uncover your truths and your auth authenticity. Oh. So through self-awareness practices like meditation or right. introspection, right. reflection, yes. you'll uncover the true essence behind the social conditioning and roles and, and masks and everything else that's going now on. Now I kind of remember that. Yes. The social conditioning sort of sparked that for me. And that is that this part of like not not feeling like I it was okay to want and desire mm. things that that meant I was greedy. Right. Um, <clears throat> that's a facet and it's only like a compartment of this whole thing. 
of balance, right? right? Like learning that when is enough. But then the other aspect of it to me is it's, but what do you believe? Right. Right. What do you believe, A, is good for you? Right. And what do you believe is, B, possible for you? Right. So the guy that lives up on the hill in the billion-dollar mansion, he was a kid one day Mm -hmm. at one point in his life, wondering what to do with his life. Either he didn't buy the naysayers baloney, or he wasn't fed that kind of information to make him not believe that where he would end up is very possible. Right. Yeah. He believed it. Yes. He put work into it. He didn't just snap his fingers. And right. if that's what you think any of this is about, right. then you're going to have a hard time. Yeah, no. So anything about life going to take work. Yes. And guess what? When you die and you no longer have a body, <laughs> do you stop working? No. Nope. No, you, you don't. keep working. Actually, you probably work more. Probably. So because you don't have a body that really needs to sleep per se. And you, you can want rest. To. Yeah. But you don't have to sleep. You want to, yeah. So, and you want to, yeah. like you said. There's no ego. There's yeah. this desire. There's a much greater. De- there's no ego there, and there's a much greater desire. Speaking of the other side, to give than receive. Oh yes, absolutely. So, I just feel like yes. I, I think that it's not bad to desire, right? To be aware of like. This is my mark, and I'm going to set it, and I'm going to aim for it. Yeah. And I won't stop until I get there. And some of the greatest success stories in the world, whether they're famous or unfamous, are based on that concept. Yeah. Yeah. Of, I have to do this, I will do this, and I will get the things that I desire as a result. Yes. Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with that. No. This is all an experience of to test you, I think, in all of us, each individual, individually, what are you capable of? Right. What do you believe you're capable of? And what do you believe is capable here mm-hmm. for you? Yeah. And I forget that a lot. Yeah. You know, myself, even in in my my own self-awareness, yeah. I forget that it's not up to anybody else. Yeah. You know, I can't point the finger at all the people that jacked me up through my life, Yeah. you know, or done me wrong. It has nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. The focus is where my bar is set and how good is my aim Mm -hmm. and do I believe I can get there? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. And becoming more self-aware, it really is helpful to your emotions, all these things that, Mm -hmm. you know, you're talking about. Because we, I feel like I deal with things differently and it's like those little things like what you were talking about, you know, with people that have hurt you and that kind of stuff. And it's like, okay, well, that's why I'm going through the therapy that I'm going through because I know that if I could fix uh, these things that are bothering me about myself, that I would be much happier. And that's something that's hard for people to look at, to say, I need to fix this about myself because if I don't. I'm going to continue to be Uh unhappy. Uh I get asked a lot in readings, when am I going to be happy? When uh, when are things going to change for me? Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, when are you going to put the effort in to be happy? Because happiness doesn't just come and knock on your door. You have to do the work for it. And a lot of that does have to do with being honest about whatever situation you're in, no matter how big or small, being honest, you know? And if it's in a relationship aspect or point of view in this topic is, you know, how much are you willing to compromise, you know, and how self-aware are you to make it work and be willing to compromise? Yeah. So like maybe there's something that you're doing that you're not even aware of. It doesn't bother you one bit, but it bothers the other person. That's right. Absolutely. And that can even be in friendships or or whatever. You know, it's those things that like and that kind of comes down to like morals and values almost. Mm -hmm. And I feel like with the spiritual awakening and the self-awareness and all that, it definitely forces you to look at those things Mm -hmm. and to deal with them. Wow. You know, like teasing. I tease you a lot. And that's something that was just like in my family that's been around me a lot. So I don't. 
at first realize like, oh, that really bothers you. You yeah. know what I mean? Until you're like, that's bothering me. Right. <laughs> right? Yeah. So you have to be honest enough and self-aware enough to be honest and come out and say that. Right. And then I have to be honest and self-aware enough to realize what I'm doing is causing a problem. Right. And so – and sometimes it, it's it's a, a bad habit, I'll be honest. So it like slips out when you're not even really thinking <laughs> and that's – not good, but so that's where I have to be more self aware and yeah. like stop that, you know, go, no, don't, don't, don't tease, you know. Yeah. Well, and on the flip side of that is the self awareness of being able to say, I don't like that and being able to do something about it. And like that is one of the things that I'm dealing with the therapist with is the fact that I feel like um, oh, that's what my mom did. And maybe that was her way of showing love was making fun, right. but there was a tone that came with it a lot of times that definitely wasn't very loving. And um, it made me pretty much not want to go to people when I need help or even to show who I truly am because one of the things that my mom loved to make fun of is who I truly was. And so it shuts you down. Right. So now I realize that I have to fix that and that I want to get to a point when you do tease me that I'm just like, yeah, whatever, you know? I know. But because of the trauma, right. it doesn't right now, I'm not able to. Right. But it's hard for people, and I'm not tooting my own horn, but in this case, it's really hard for most people to say, I have a problem myself. Yeah. You're not the problem. But I, it causes something. In right. Me. Yeah. Because there are other people that tease me and I've mentioned that to you. Yeah. And it's like, I don't like it. Like, I yeah. just don't. I don't think that it's a, a term, a form of endearment at all. Yeah. And so, like, I, I know people that have, they think it's cute and will tease and it's like, mm, just don't. But they don't know me. Right. They don't know where I've come from or what I've been through. So I have to fix it so that when the other person does that, it doesn't affect me that way. Right. That's self-awareness. Yeah. Yeah. It's important. It is. Yep. Absolutely. So let's see. Like you have to know, you know, let's talk about things about like, um, let's talk about vices in these okay. situations, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. that... You have to be self-aware of what your weakness is. Yeah. Um, and what, you know, what environments or situations you might put yourself in mm -hmm. that will compromise that if you're, if that's something you're working on. Right. So again, that's being self-aware. Right. So, you know, it's hard. It's like, that's like telling, you know, an alcoholic, well, why don't you want to go sit at the bar and see your friends? Right. Well, he's self-aware that he has a problem with the alcohol. Right. And the chances are, if he goes there and sees his friends, he's going to drink. Yep. And then nothing's going to change. Mm hmm So those kind of things. Yes. Um, and even this young woman that you were talking about earlier, being self-aware about their life, their body, how they feel. Right. Um, that's more important than what anybody else sees. Oh, yeah, absolutely. To me is how do you feel? Mm -hmm. um, and so that is the cue from you. Yeah. To say, yeah, we're not happy. Right. So can we make some changes? Yeah. That's you talking to you. Yes. Um. And we have this ability to do this with ourselves, to guide ourselves. Now, it could be others. It could be your – maybe you have a lost loved one that died of a heart attack because they didn't take care of themselves. Yeah. And so they might be up in your ear. Yeah. Pushing you, telling you, come on. Yeah, do something. Change – make some changes, you know? Yeah. So – it's all relative in some strange way. Really. Isn't it, though? And, you know, while, while you were saying that, I, I wrote down um, that one of the things that we have a problem with is um, admitting that we have a problem, mm -hmm. but kind of making it a joke uh, and not doing anything about it. Like, I used to really have a bad shopping problem, but I would make a joke out of it. You know, I could have $100 in the bank and be bored and go to Target and spend 99 of those dollars, right. you know? And not think it was a problem. Just laugh it off and be like, yeah, I have a shopping problem. So what? 
that is not self-awareness. Right. Self-awareness is being able to say, okay, I have a problem. Right. It's not healthy. And I need to do something right. about it because nobody else is going to do something about it. I do. Right. And, but I'll tell you that if you don't, the universe usually has a way of making you learn it. That mm-hmm. happens a lot. When you're not mm-hmm. willing to change something about yourself, the universe will keep putting that situation in front of you until you get tired of it. That's and true. I'll tell you, that was one of the things that I'm so tired of. I don't want to shop anymore. I don't like spending money anymore. And maybe I'm a little bit on the other side now where like I hold on to the money too tight, which isn't good either like i know that there's a balance but it's like because i can now recognize like old habits and be like oh i don't want to do that ever again (laughs) you know it changes a person it does when you when you have to face yourself facing yourself is even harder i think than facing others sometimes oh yeah yeah why is that yeah we spent uh more time being tortured in our own thoughts than from the outside world Oh, absolutely, because we're always there. We're always in our own heads. And what we choose to think about is up to us. But right. most people, you know, that are, are stuck in a pit or, or having a bad time, they will stay in that with their thoughts. You know, it, it is it's that magical thing that I think a lot of people are looking for to bring them up out of whatever it is that they're in. Oh, yeah. And there is absolutely nobody that's going to do that for you but yourself. And I go through like these spells of depression and I do, I get mad. I get mad at the universe. Why aren't you helping me? Why aren't you doing anything for me? (laughs) And then I realize, well, because you're the one that's acting like a brat, first of all. And I know that when I act like that, I don't get anywhere. I can't blame the universe. You know, self-awareness. So let's see, what are some ways that we can become more self-aware and try and and work on some of this? So mindfulness is something that we've talked about a lot in the past. Um, We even did an episode about it. And mindfulness can mean a lot of things, but I'll, I'll read you this definition or what this says is take time to be present in the moment. Notice your thoughts, feelings, and sensations without judgment. This can be done through meditation, deep breathing exercises, or simply paying attention to your surroundings. So if I've done something wrong myself, what I think I used to do would be to blame other people. But now once whatever the situation is, I take time and I reflect on it. And I look at what could I have done differently? Why did it go down the way that it did? Where was my role in it? Being mindful of all those little pieces in there and maybe what you can do for next time. Like we've had conversations where sometimes it's like, It feels like it's going to get heated, you know, like it starts to get there. And then I will hear the universe go, you need to stop. Like, like there's something that I'm doing that's causing it to escalate or whatever. Uh You need to take some deep breaths and you need to calm down and you need to reevaluate the situation. And I wish everybody heard that in their heads when they were in those situations, because most of the time it does make me stop and go, okay, you win. I think most of us do. It's just, do you heed the warning. Yeah. Yep. That's true. The, and does the ego step aside? Yes. No, you're right. You probably do. Yeah. Yep. Um, Those are the little life lessons that are every single day, whether it's in and out. You know what I mean? Like uh, yeah. it can be very simple and trivial and still be a lesson. Yes. And I think we face lessons, especially in regards to our ego, mm-hmm. a lot. Yep. A good way to practice mindfulness is being like grateful for the things around you, being mindful of them. So like what I mean by that is like those flowers that you walk by every single day Mm -hmm. and you don't pay much attention to stop and look at them and look at what they're made out of, how they're shaped and all of that and be thankful for that flower. The mindfulness of seeing that it's more than just a flower, that it's an actual living creature is one of those, you know, ways of expanding your mind. When you're mindful and you look deeper into things, it makes you not just do that, but to realize that we are all one and we are all connected. So the mindfulness can do a lot for you. Yeah. Be mindful about about everything in your life, really. I try. It's hard. It's really hard. But that's where actually the next one is the reflecting on your emotions. Reflecting on, you know, how how you're feeling about something and why are you feeling that way? Because Mm -hmm. it does come down to that. Nobody can make you feel Mm -hmm. a certain way. They can't. Uh -uh. You're making yourself feel a certain way. 
Right. You know, it it's not that person's responsibility. It just like with this situation, you know, with teasing, it's not your responsibility to not tease me. Just right. like the other people, it's my responsibility to not take it so personally. What? And being mindful of the fact that I do take it too personally and I am very sensitive will hopefully help to get through that. Yeah. You know, it kind of all fits together. But but even in situations <clears throat> like where you know that you've done wrong or they've been hard situations, the feeling of your emotions, I feel, is really important. Right. Like, I will catch myself sitting in something and just reflecting on how I'm feeling at that moment because a, I might never want to feel this way again. And so I might be telling myself, okay, so, you know, we, this is wrong or this is what happened and we're not going to feel this way again. We're not going to do this again. Hmm. You know, it, yeah. it's important, but it also can show you the things that you enjoy in life, the things that do make you happy reflecting on your emotions. I think a lot of times we just ignore them. We just stuff them aside and don't, don't dig deep into them and feel them. Even the most painful things feel it. You know, it's like I tell myself when I'm in those moments that this is today. It's not tomorrow or the next day or the next day. So today I'm going to feel this emotion. I'm going to uh -huh. sit with it and I'm going to understand it. And I'm going to try and understand why I feel this way about what's going on. Uh -huh. And those things not only help you to learn more about yourself, but then in turn, after you've learned more about yourself, you understand other people more. Because yeah. now that I realize that nobody else is like me but me, <clears throat> I don't look at people as harshly. And I give them more of like, you know, I don't know, a chance right. in things because I realize that they're a product of what they've been through, what their childhood was, the things they haven't healed, the shadow work they haven't done. They're a product of all of those things a lot of which I don't know anything about because I didn't live their life. Right. You know, all goes together. Yeah, it's... Uh, I mean, you said something earlier where you said, like, nobody can make you feel a certain way. And, and for the most part, that's true. I mean, if we're going to get into, like, heavy-duty, like, abuse and type of okay, yeah. things like this, okay, then somebody's going out of their way to make you feel bad. But you're allowing them to. Well, this is what I was going to... That's yeah. a very good point. That's where I was kind of going next was your self-awareness should be technically leading you to uh, understanding of like red flag yeah. this is something's not right here yep okay you're still relying on your self-awareness yes so and yes they're going out of their way to do that but i think kind of what you were saying on an average if somebody's teasing or there's somebody at work that you just go man they don't like me yeah, okay maybe they don't right but so who cares? Who cares? It's it's one person. Right. Really, it is. I, I dated somebody after my divorce who made me feel like I was a horrible person and everything that I did was wrong. And then the relationship turned violent. Not towards me, but he started getting violent, like kick, <clears throat> or punched through my door. There were things that he did. Um and I had always told myself, I will not be in a situation where there is any type of physical abuse or anything like that. And sometimes when you say those things, then you're faced with them. What are you going to do in this situation? So I could have just stayed in that relationship. And it did take me a, a little while to get out of it because I was in such shock and, you know, let it go for a little while. But at the end of the day, I respected myself enough to say, I'm not going to tolerate this. Yeah. And saw, I'm not the problem here. I'm not the problem. He's the problem. I'm not doing anything to cause <clears throat> somebody to become violent with me. And I think in those situations, that's one of the hardest parts is that you have to tell yourself, this isn't about me. What? It's about the other person. They're the violent one. Mm -hmm. They're the one with the problem. I'm just, unfortunately, the person that they're, it's being taken out on. Right. And we can see that a lot in, like, children and animals that mm -hmm. are abused. What did they do? Right. They didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. You know, you're taking your issues out on them. Mm -hmm. And it's very common, unfortunately. Yeah. I, mean, I dealt with that in my first marriage, yeah. that there was violence and, and it wasn't me. Yeah. But a lot of what I would hear afterwards was is there was a very much a psychological game yes. of, of, well, you should go ask so-and-so, like speaking about a mutual friend <laughs> of some sort. You should go ask them what they think. 
What is well, it? they might agree with you about some of the stuff you might be saying. Yeah. But if I went up and told them, I get punched directly in the face with a fist. Right. How do, how do you think they're going to think right. about that? Exactly. But I never shot back with that right. a lot. I just sort of, I don't know, internalized it, I think, in some level until I finally realized, no, this isn't right. Yeah. Not realized. It took me, I knew, but until I finally just stepped up and said, I'm done. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah. It's it's very hard, and that's why in a lot of abusive relationships, people don't get out, wow. and they stay, and they, they do think that it's them. And I'm sure many times you were told, if you didn't do this, I wouldn't have to do oh, that. Yeah, I was – I mean, we went to marriage counseling, and it was said in, to the therapist, he brings me to this point. Right. And, you know, therapist said, no, there's never a reason or no. excuse to put a hand on anybody. To do anything in like aggression that. like that. Yeah. Um, so, it, but it gets, yeah, the, the hole gets deeper, especially with certain things, you know, like if you add a child into the, the equation. So now you have like a responsibility together, you know, or yeah. you own a home, you yeah. know, there's just this, uh, you know, mounting responsibility that happens yeah. and you're finding every reason not to make a change exactly, yeah. because of those things yeah. when your self-awareness is still telling you. This is abuse. Right. But but you know what? Your abusers, they can absolutely make you feel like you're the one that's mm -hmm. causing the problems. You know, it's like like talking about the boyfriend that put his fist through the door. Well, we were fighting. I locked the door because I needed I needed a break. And maybe that was my bad for locking the door. And maybe I shouldn't have done that. Right. But it didn't deserve no. a fist to come through the door. No. So... I was at fault maybe for locking the door, but he did not need to respond by putting his fist through it. Right. I would not have responded like that. If he would have locked the door on me, I would have probably just <sighs> left him alone for a little while and then came back and like knocked and been right. like, can we talk? But, you know, so again, it, it is on the people that are in the situation, but but being in those situations and having an abuser <clears throat> is not about the person that's being abused. It's about the person that's doing the abuse. And right. that's really hard for a lot of people to, to look at. They think I, there must be something wrong with me if I'm being treated this way. But the story is always about you, right? Yeah. So, like, if you're the abuser, then it's up to you and your self-awareness to come to that conclusion yeah. that you are such. Yes. If you are the abusee, again, it is up to you through your own self-awareness to realize you're being abused. Yes. And it's time to change that situation. Yep. Love can make you do crazy things too. Like yeah. I, I really remember being in that relationship and not being able to logically look at it as not being my fault, but looking at it now and going, oh my God. I don't even know if it was necessarily all your love. Is the fear of being alone is enough sometimes. Yeah, but... but if you feel like you love this person and like, because I do a lot of love readings and I hear from a lot of women, even men that are like, but I, I love this person. Like they're my soulmate They're You know, we have this connection or whatever. Okay. Well, if you were such soulmates and you had such a strong connection, then they wouldn't want to do that to you. You know? So it's, it's really about looking at all the situations and using that self-awareness and, and what it is that you want in your life and having the strength to do what you need to do to get your life where it needs to be. And that's very scary for a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. I know there's a lot of people that look at their situations as hopeless, yeah. as this is the situation I've gotten myself into and I'm never going to be able to get out of it. And I'm sure there were many times that you felt that way about yeah. your first marriage of like, this is just what I'm going to have to deal with for the rest of my life. Yeah. But and you made that decision that, nah, I'm not, not doing this. I, yeah. It just got to a point where I couldn't accept that, oh, this is what I had to have forever. Yeah. You know, it was like letting go of all the, whatever that I thought was going to snowball, you know, or avalanche on me, whether it was finances or yep. reputation, whatever it was, it was like, it didn't, it finally reached the point where it didn't matter. Yeah. So if I was going to be in debt forever, so be it. Yeah. You right. Know, if all the people that we were mutually associated with wanted to disown me, so yep, be it. Exactly. Let it doesn't matter. Right. Make new friends. Yeah. You know? So, I, and you know, I'm again being faced with this too. Again, in my life, with certain situations that have to kind of reface similar 
scenarios and situations and making me very self-aware. Yeah. Of They're supposed to, yeah. Where my some of my damage and trauma comes from mm-hmm. and the root of it and showing me what are you going to – or not showing me, asking me kind of in a way, what are you going to do? And I think that on a spiritual awakening journey, that's something that the universe does with people is that it has to show you these things. Right. And like those things that keep coming back and keep coming back, right. there's a reason for that. I, I know that this happens for other people that aren't spiritual or going through an awakening, but I do feel like once you take on that journey, that the universe wants to make you more aware of everything. And so right. you, you get faced with those things more and more. Right. So every time now that I'm faced with something, I always ask, what's the lesson? What's the lesson? Because there's got to be one. Mm -hmm. And you can't always find it. It's not always right there. But, you know, maybe eventually. But it's hard. It is hard. I would say even with the self-awareness is being self-aware of the the thoughts. Okay? Because there's there's a voice in everybody's head. And it's your own voice. Yeah. And it talks to you all day long. Yeah. That's your higher self. I don't care who you are. You could say, no, I don't. Nobody. That's not true. (laughs) Baloney. Every one of us has a voice in us. Yes. And it's talking to us constantly. Whether we hear certain things, that's different. Yeah. So meaning if your voice is saying bad things to you that aren't helping your life, then be self-aware. Right. If your voice is lifting you up, and sharing things that's going to help you be self-aware. Yeah. Listen yeah. to those things. Um, it, it, I don't know. Like, here's an example. Um, I, you've, many of you have heard throughout, if you listen to this podcast, I played in a band for many years called Gypsy Brown. And the drummer of that band and I are pretty still good, pretty good friends. And he does a Fleetwood Mac cover thing, a tribute band. And they happened to finally break into Las Vegas to play. Yeah. So they came to last night, spent the night, just hung out, and we got to play music. And that was something that I felt like – I felt like the universe was going, you've been kicking some butt. You've been trying yeah. hard. Yeah. You've been working. And they kind of threw me something. Totally. An emotional bone. Is yeah. Like, like here, go to... play some yeah. music and have fun because I haven't really been doing that a no. lot. Not playing. Yeah. More just, just doing art and, and mixing some music for somebody. But – um, so this was a nice treat. And then I rec- reflected on when I said goodbye to him leaving California. And I remember saying to him, I'm pretty sure. And this was my self-awareness listening yeah. to this voice in my head. Yeah. Said, this isn't the last time. Yeah. That you no, two. you said that to me too. Yeah. Will have interactions. Yeah. So. I felt like last night was a definite proof of that, yeah. that fact. And then after kind of some of the conversation that was happening, I started to realize this, this could happen more frequently. Yeah. Like this, that statement actually could full well be absolutely true. Right. So, but if I weren't being self-aware, I wouldn't even have noticed that thought. Totally. And then reiterated it to him. Yeah. Like this isn't the last time. Yeah. This isn't it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's neat. Yeah. To be kind of, you know, like that. Yeah. Absolutely. So. All right. We got a few more minutes. So let's read a couple more of these ways that you can become more self-aware. Try new things. Stepping out of your comfort zone and trying new activities or experiences can reveal strength, weaknesses, and preferences. When I got divorced um, from my first husband, I didn't know who I was. I really didn't. Like... If you asked me if I like the decor in my house, I would say, yeah, it's okay. You know, uh, do you like the movies that you watch? Yeah, they're all right. But I couldn't really tell you what Samantha liked. And so probably the first year or so after my divorce, I tried a lot of things to find out what I liked. I went to movies by myself just because I wasn't sure. Do I like superhero movies? Do I like, like, deep movies? Like I saw... It was an English movie. I can't remember. British movie. I can't remember what it was. And I was like the uh, king something. I, I, I was pretty sure I wasn't going to like it, but I was like, you know what? 
I don't know because I don't know who I am. So I'm going to go see it. I didn't like it. <laughs> but, but you know what? I wouldn't have known. I started right. watching sports to see which sports I was actually interested in and not which ones I was just watching because I was forced to watch them. Right. These things help us to know who we are, which helps us to have more self-awareness and to go after the things that we want. That can open up so many things. It can open up your purpose, ex- trying new things, you know, yeah. trying to talk to dead people is what got me here, you know. That's took me forever to try and do that. So, but, um, but yeah, exactly what you're supposed to do. Right. And strangely enough, just took a long time. <laughs> yep. Um, let's see. Self-reflection exercises. Set aside time for self-reflective exercises, such as creating a life timeline to map out specific events and their impact on you or making a list of values and goals to clarify what's important to you. I love to write things down. I'm old school like that. Yeah. And I've actually been working on creating like a manifestation workbook and stuff to sell on Etsy. And these self-reflection exercises are a big thing because it is. It's reflecting back on the things that have happened to you in the past. You know, thing, where did that get you? What did you learn from it? What do you not want? to happen again from that situation what do you want to happen again it's all really good at helping you discover who you are what i agree yeah um therapy or counseling talking to a therapist or counselor can offer a supportive environment for exploring your thoughts feelings and behaviors and gaining deeper self-understanding absolutely because sometimes you just need to talk to somebody and like people like this woman that i'm seeing now you know she's gone through school to learn how to help people with stuff and i just can't figure certain things out so it's like well and she even said to me she's like we're a team now we're gonna do this together and i was like what (laughs) i haven't had a lot of therapists like that so i was like that's cool but that's how it should be we're gonna figure this out together well yeah i mean i think if you go in a lot of people's uh outlook on that on therapy or whatever talking to someone means either you're crazy you're sick something's wrong with you um why right we talk to people all day long, but we're just not used to talking in confidence with a stranger. Right. Right. Yeah. That's where it gets weird. Everybody's like, well, this is something you should talk to your husband or wife about or your parent or your kid or, you know, well, maybe no. Yeah. Maybe some of these things are just not meant for those people. Right. They're meant for someone that isn't so close. Yes. But if you go into it thinking more of about why does this have to be about so much Because I don't want to take a word away from the word healing, but why does it have to be so much about healing and not enough about growth? Yeah, absolutely. I think that that they should go together. Right. I'm just going because I want to change. I want to grow. I want to communicate about what's inside me. Yeah. So I can figure out what I like. Yes. But the healing is an important part of that. It is. And that is probably the most important is yeah. to, you probably can't grow until you heal. Yeah. But I think we all look at that as like, um, you know, that's the ultimate goal going into these things True. or these sessions. And then it feels a little daunting and depressing Yeah. sometimes because you feel like, well, what am I healing from? Oh, uh, yeah, I try to have this and I have that and I have this and I have that. Instead of going, I just want to get through this. Right. I want to grow. Right. Like, I want to be past this. Yeah. That's definitely the way I feel right now. But I do feel also that I haven't healed. Like, I can accept the fact that I am the way that I am because of how I was raised. But I don't know that I've healed from it yet because I feel like if I had, then it would have been easier for me to get past. So it's kind of like the whole package, the whole... You know, it's a it's a package deal, but the growth is very important, and yeah. the growth is definitely something that I think when you do heal, that it almost comes naturally because now you look at it differently. You're like, okay, well, I don't feel this way about this anymore because I've healed from it. I understand, so now I can grow in these ways because that's not holding me back. Yeah, like I'm perfectly fine of like. Like, if there's somebody out there on social media that says, you know, psychics are fake or whatever, or something like that, or or whatever, but then when it comes to the people around me and they tease me, that hurts. So you can see that my damage is not done from people, like, far on the outside that I don't even know. It's, right. like, worried about these people that are on the inside that came from mom. Yep. So heal and grow, and then you don't, you know, care <clears throat> anymore about what the other people are saying. 
That's the goal. Yeah, it is the goal. Yep. The growth is the goal. Yep. Well, I think that is about it for today. Bravo. Yeah, I really like the topic. And I do think that even though it's really hard and it can be frustrating to have to look at yourself and work on yourself, it is really important. And the the healing, the growth, the, the self-awareness, everything that comes with it makes you a happier person. Right. You know, it's like this is one area that I'm working on. But there's so many other areas that I've already grown from and I've already healed from right. and dealt with that those aren't an issue anymore. Right. So it's like, again, it goes back to baby steps, one thing at a time. And just knowing that, you know, without without change, nothing changes. So yeah, if you want things to change, you have to change. I saw something the other day on Facebook that said, um, you're not afraid of the change. You're afraid of the uncomfortableness uh-huh. of the change. And that's exactly right because it it is uncomfortable. And just like it's uncomfortable maybe to move somewhere or do things like that, it's also very uncomfortable to have to face yourself and have to say, this is where this issue comes from and this is what I've played into it or whatever it is that you're dealing with, you know? Yeah. Yeah. True. But it's it's rewarding work, so. Yep. Yep. Very good. Yay. Well, would you like to share your information one more time before we say goodbye? Yes. So you could find me at samanthajonespsychicmedium.com. You can find the TV show there, links to our podcast, or you can email us at spiritualjoneses at gmail.com. And then I have an Etsy, too, which is Beyond the Bridge 11. Very good. And for you, sir. Yes. For my art, djonesartcollection.com. For the web, at djonesartcollection. For Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. And don't forget, if you'd like to take a guess at what I am doing right now currently, um, which would entitle you to a free print of your choice up to like 11 by 17, feel free yeah, to send us a message and take a guess. For sure. So, and then for my uh, photography Etsy shop, D Jones Photography 71, and my Instagram photography is D Jones 71 photography. And that's it for me. Fabulous. Well, we hope that everybody got something out of this. That we do. And that you can go out there and be a little bit more self-aware um, for your own sake. Yes. Not for the guy staring at you, maybe, or not staring at you. Yep. But for you. Do it for yourself. Yeah. And go out there and have a great week. Yes. And until next week. Peace, peace and love. love.